Hello everybody, it is Benicia, your Community Outreach Specialist with Pasco Sheriff's Office, and I am here to bring you the answers from Monday's Q&A video, the start of it. So I just want to go ahead and throw out a disclaimer. First of all, this video is incredibly long because I just, I didn't want to cut anybody off time-wise in their answers and I wanted to allow everyone the time that they needed to feel sufficient in their answers. So what you can do is go ahead, if you don't want to watch the whole video, you can drop below to the description and I will put the timestamp for every question as well as the question itself so that you guys can skip forward or, you know, go to the area that you feel like you best want to listen to. So I did group the questions and find someone that I feel like was best suited to answer them. So we grouped them into SWAT, canine, marine, community relations, patrol, and I think that was everyone. So they'll be grouped into categories based off of who answered them as well as the timestamp and the question below if you want to skip ahead. So now that that disclaimer is over, I will go ahead, actually I also have an announcement. So starting next week, we will actually be doing like two minute live videos on Facebook on whatever day one of our social media coordinators does a tweet along. I will be going out there and meeting up with our social media coordinator and the individual doing the tweet along just to ask them a couple of quick questions before they start the tweet along and just to kind of drive you guys to go ahead and watch the tweet along. So those will be happening on Facebook on either Tuesday or Wednesday morning. So be on the lookout for those to come. So with that, I will answer my questions. There were not a lot, um, but you're gonna just go ahead and get to it. Okay, so question number one is, what does editing a video look like producing as well as directing? So I won't get into this. It's pretty, I don't know, like trivial, but it can take me a pretty long time to edit a video nowadays. Um, the shortest amount of time I can edit a video is maybe about two days uh, with everything that I've learned how to do, color grading, uh, speed ramping, masking, write-on effects, audio enhancing, finding the songs. So it's, it's a lot that goes into it. Okay. Um, can you tell us the background on how the 9 p.m. routine was started as well as tweet alongs? So the 9 p.m. routine was actually started by my boss, Chase Daniels, the sheriff, Sheriff Notko, and the original social media coordinator who is now known as Deputy Reese. And we actually just copyrighted it a couple of weeks ago and had a press conference on it. So when you see other agencies and other departments talking about the 9 p.m. routine, we actually started that. So from what I understand, it actually came as a way to kind of combat the attempted vehicle burglaries and the vehicle burglaries that were happening, as well as people breaking into homes because they were leaving valuables in sight and leaving their doors unlocked. So very simple, easy, and it was in a simple, easy, effective way to put across our social media platforms that anyone of any age can do. Anyone can double check to make sure a door is locked and check in with us. So, okay. I thought this was funny, and I know it wasn't supposed to be intended for this, but I figured I would include it. Why did I cut my hair? What did you do to your hair? I did what I wanted to, and I cut it because I wanted to. So this is not the first time that I have cut all my hair off. I absolutely love it, and I really appreciate appreciate all of you that have been very kind um, towards me, saying that you like it. I, I appreciate it, but I did what I wanted to, and my husband really likes it, and it took me a really long time to find a barber. But uh, you guys have no clue why I did it or if there were other reasons behind it. So I just think it's a little rude of you that keeps saying, bring back the long hair. Are you going to pay for it? <laughs> okay, so these are just some fun questions because there were a couple of questions about my role as a PIO um, and like getting members ready for press conferences. But you'll see later in this video that I actually bring in Amanda and have her answer those with me. So someone asked what was my favorite quote from a book, movie, or show. So two off the top of my head, um, one is Stay Gold Pony Boy, and it's from The Outsiders, which was a book which was adapted into a movie. Um, so Stay Golden is a motto that I've looked by for a very long time. It's very important to me, near and dear. I talk about it in my Five Things video, my personal one. Um, and then probably, oh, what is it? I have not failed. I've just found 10,000 ways that don't work. And Thomas Edison said that. So I think that that's very key. Okay. 
who or what has influenced you the most this past year? That's a really big question. Um, I don't necessarily think it's been an individual or like, nothing like that. I think that in general, it's been different events that have happened to me. So I've had a couple of health scares this year. Um, my husband was actually, he flipped over a car about two months ago on his motorcycle. Someone pulled out in front of him and then stopped in a two lane road and he hit the brakes as much as he could, but he flipped over the car. Um, so different events that have happened have just reminded me that we get too stressed out about things that we have no control over and things can change like that. And it's helped me to remind myself how important it is to me uh, my family and what I want out of life and what I want for myself and where I want to see myself in a couple of years and how much those around me do mean to me. So that's probably just different events have helped influence me the most this year. Um, and then just the last one, it, fun question, what is your least favorite food and or beverage? Um, probably anything chocolatey. I, I'm not really a big fan of chocolate, so yeah. Okay, so those are my questions, a couple of things about editing and whatnot and some general fun questions. So now you'll see I'm gonna pass you off to the next set of questions uh, for whatever those may be and I'll see you guys at the end of it. <laughs> I'm with Ashley to answer who's a community engagement assistant um, within my unit, uh, the community relations unit. So I just to uh, answer her questions. So first question for Ashley was, can you describe in detail what you do? What I do, AKA what I don't do. Um, so my position is evolving. It mm -hmm. has been, it's going to continue to mm -hmm. evolve. Um, some of the main things that I do, I put on our two main charity events. So mm -hmm. our shotgun shootout, which is in February. And then we have our annual fishing tournament, which just mm -hmm. passed. We had it in October. Thank you to everyone who came out. It was fun. We it made was jokes fun. on the boat. Yes, it was great. I had good jokes that day. Anyways. I prefer the shootout though. Yes, shootout mm -hmm. was really fun. And we hold the largest shootout in the state of Florida. <laughs> Side note, <laughs> boom, mic drop. Um, so I coordinate those events from start to finish, everything that goes into it. Um, we have a lot of volunteers from our jail that help out as well, and I'm very mm -hmm. thankful for all of them. Um, so in addition to that, I also float around and help anyone else in the unit. So Corporal Ziegler, who is our officer friendly out in Lacucci, mm -hmm. I help out there a lot with her. Um, so really anyone in the unit that needs help, I will be there. In addition to that, I do manage all of the charity store yes. functions. Mm -hmm. So all of your orders, thank you to everyone who <laughs> continues to purchase. Yes. But also side note, I am one person, mm -hmm. one tiny little human being. She's not even five foot one. I'm not five foot one. So, so literally. <laughs> please be nice to me. There's a yeah. lot of you in one of me, um, but I do. And you have other job responsibilities and some take priority. That versus mailing. So yep. some days are devoted to taking care of orders and making sure they're situated and straight and that you guys don't put in orders with no addresses or, you know, and then um, versus some days are devoted to other things. Like if yep. we have an event or if you have to plan and coordinate and get certain things taken yep. care of. Like so. you've already started, you're deep into working on the shotgun shootout for February. Like, and you have been for a couple of weeks. So it's like the day That's after the lot. fishing tournament, she starts on the shotgun shootout. Yep. So again, and, just be nice. And also other events. So she's actually the main individual that is planning our meet and greet that we have. I don't even know what it is. I just found out about it. Yeah, meet April and greet. or May. It's going to be know. in April. April yes. 4th, I believe. Mm -hmm. So you're the one that planned so. that. You were the main one that helped plan the live PD meet and greet too. The, according. So that's getting vendors, getting the t-shirts, getting the tickets, getting the pens, the tables, traffic control, signs, manning the lights, um, taking volunteers. care of cleanup, volunteers, water for all of us um, that help out, um, scheduling, coordinating with different units like the chain of command, COCs, to make sure that certain members can be there. Um, it's a lot. Like when you think about it, oh, I could put on an event. All right. And, and then you, you actually thousands. have to do it. You're like, wow, I didn't think about this. And there's She's like so just loud. little things. <laughs> I'm Cuban. I can't help it. She's, um, no. So 
Darn it, I completely lost my train of thought. I messed myself up. It's okay. Let's just continue. Yeah, it's just a lot that she does do. And it's constantly evolving because what she did a year ago in this position isn't what she does now. So as the needs of our unit and the community grow and what we can handle your responsibilities. Then my grow. job description yes, goes like it's this. It's ever evolving. It's just like my position. I don't really quite do what I did a year ago. Yeah. So yeah, but so. I love how you've grown and Thanks. watching you evolve into this position and make it your own. It's great. It's special. So another question that someone asked you is what does a working day look like for you? A working day. Well, it depends on what day you want to know mm -hmm. about. And what is going on. Yes. Every mm -hmm. day is different. I don't, I honestly, every day is different. Some days I'm out in La Cucci at the Boys and Girls Club all day. Some days I'm in Wesley Chapel, in Wesley community. Chapel, running around the community. There's rarely am I ever Clearwater. just in the office all day. Like <laughs> it's also nice because I have the ability to work from Remote. Remote. Mm -hmm. um, so really, it's just different each day. Today, I will be, if you want to know <laughs> what I'm doing today, I will be doing uh, more mailing. So mm -hmm. you're welcome. Um, just kidding. And I didn't mean it like mean or anything, but. Some things just are seem mundane and just yeah. aren't as fun and enjoyable. But also. But I'll be doing the shootout doing too. Is, so what comes with that is also figuring out um making sure things work. So working closely with IT that certain links on our website work so that she can get registrations in in a proper amount of time. And so registrations for the shotgun shootout have already started to come in in the last couple of days, but they're not going to the correct place. So that's something that she also has to work on and spend time. Make sure. I will be working on the shootout today mm -hmm. as well as mailing. So every day is different. Mm -hmm. But it's nice though, I get to go out and about mm -hmm. and switch up my day, so it's mm -hmm. kind of cool. Stressful, ever evolving, you adapt and conquer. You overcome. Oh, I thought our, our mission's, but we adapt and conquer. Uh, or that too. Okay. <laughs> All right, and another question that someone sent in for Ashley was, when or if will Canadians ever be able to purchase items from the site? The golden question. We've I get this question, mm -hmm. not just from people in Canada, but people in Europe. Um, unfortunately, due to logistics and costs, I don't see us ever doing yeah. that. It's just, there's a lot that goes into it. And unfortunately we cannot with customs. And yeah. There's just a lot that goes into it. And unfortunately we cannot, uh, not adapt. We we just can't, I can't we work can't. it into yes. it, and that's above our decision. So um, what I try to do to be accommodating to those who would like to order that are not in the United States, if you do know someone who lives in the States, um, I would be friend. family, friends, anyone, I'd be more than happy to send your order to that address um, and they can send it to you from there. Mm -hmm. So I have no problem doing that. It's just unfortunately, again, due to logistics and costs, I cannot... And this is above, above my decision. I cannot, <laughs> pay grades. Mm -hmm. I cannot send out of the country. Yes. So you guys are loyal. Like that, that email where I get all the orders is constantly yeah. full. So you guys are hashtag Kudos loyal. You guys. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So those are all of the questions basically directed uh, specifically to Ashley. So Ashley's questions and we're off to the next person. Bye. Okay, so now guys, we are with Sergeant Lynn Salata and we're over in our detention center. And how you doing? Good, how are you? I'm good, thanks. Okay, so your question is, can inmates wear tinted glasses while they're in the jail? Yes, <laughs> so inmates are allowed prescription glasses, tinted or non-tinted, but they have to be approved by medical first. Hmm, that was simple. Yep. <laughs> and easy. on to the next. Okay guys, so I have Deputy Stone here to answer the canine questions. He is one of our trainers that we have. So yeah, who better suited, right? Okay, sure. so first question that we're gonna ask is how hard is it to become a canine handler? Well, with our agency, um, and, and everybody's a little different. Mm -hmm. So you have to get some a little experience, a uh, little time on the road. Mm -hmm learn what it is to be a law enforcement officer 
and then there's a selection process. So you got to go go to YouTube and watch her <laughs> video that she yes. posted on it. <laughs> Um, but there's so there's a selection process mm -hmm. with with tryouts, mm -hmm. um, running, push-ups, mm -hmm. crawling, um, crawling, swamp swimming, stuff, through yes. swamps. So a lot of that, a lot of environmental, mm -hmm. messy stuff, mm -hmm. uh, just to make sure that the candidates are okay mm -hmm. with all of that. They don't mm -hmm. have any issues with it and, and not scared of the dark yeah. or exactly. Yeah, so, I would not make it. <laughs> And then, and then from there, there's some home visits involved to make mm -hmm. sure that the environment in which the canine is going to be housed is sufficient. Okay. And and then there's aura boards. So Wait, it's just I didn't know about that. Yeah, mm -hmm. Some aura boards. So and I, I can't go into what those questions are. Yeah, I mean, if you want to know, you can just come, be on the road. That's it. Get off probation, try out, mm -hmm. make it, get your aura board. That, that's all you'll know. Yep. Boom. Okay, so. How much training do they have to complete once they're selected? So the initial uh, phase, once the handler and the canine are selected and paired together as a team, um, it, there's a minimum of 480 hours per Jeez. FDLE standards, because we all are FDLE mm -hmm. certified, but there's a minimum oh, of 480. Gosh. We run somewhere between 560 and 600 hours just to make sure that make we sure, have exactly. plenty of plenty of time in there oh, and, and the dogs lot. are and the dogs and handlers are where they need mm -hmm. to be. So. And that's just right off the bat cuz you guys just still right do off the bat. training every week and then you sometimes do like monthly trainings and I know if you have like a specialty dog like one of the bloodhounds they go to like bloodhound training like out of the state sometime and yes. then we have our human ro remains detection dogs and then our live find dogs and then our SWAT our SWAT canines yeah. or the, the, the EOD dogs, EOD the narcotics dogs. dogs. So there's all that 480 hours that I was talking about FDLE. That's just the initial the, for patrol right at, right at the front. basics, mm -hmm. right? Well, and then once that's they get wild. the experience working the road, then they're going out and then they're doing their, their specialty, their, okay. their detector work, okay. which is an additional, mm -hmm. um, we run about 200, maybe 300 Sheesh. hours worth of that. Uh, and then there's certifications mm -hmm. along with that, but the training continues. It's, it never it, stops. Yeah, when mm -hmm. guys get some downtime, mm -hmm. um, they go out and they, they'll do some stuff on their own. If it's something mm -hmm. they can't do on their own, then we have our, our weekly trainings that we do. And then, of course, every now and then we get multi agency groups together and yep. train. Which you guys have so, seen a lot. Which, mm -hmm. Yes. Yep. Good they're, that's they're, a, that's they're, a lot of they're training. They're also on the channel. Exactly, yes. exactly. Mm -hmm. ZPD, Dade City, mm -hmm. Newport Ritchie, you guys know them, okay? All right. So. What is next? Okay, what type of schedule do the canine deputies work? Oh boy, I mm -hmm. wish it was that simple. I know, I know right? So, <laughs> like, so typically, normally, we, we mimic mm -hmm. the, the patrol schedule mm -hmm. that they do, which is it's a 12-hour shift mm -hmm. uh, for the most part, but you you have every other weekend off. Yes. So you have Friday, Saturday, mm -hmm. Sunday, every other mm -hmm. weekend off. So the hour, the days that you work this week, you're off next week. Exactly. And it's of and course the two off. week, the two week pay period. However, <laughs> because we're a specialty unit, our, our hours are very wonky, wonky <laughs> and flexible. Yes. Uh, so mm -hmm. yeah, you get those phone calls. Hey, mm -hmm. I need you to come in and we have this going on. So mm -hmm. it has to be done. Yeah. Boom. But we do always have at least it's two canines on at a time. At, at least, at, yeah, at, for, at yes. least. Okay. Yes. So that's pretty much how, okay, so how many days in a week do they get off? Oh, so, just like patrols. So just like patrols, mm -hmm. you have a short week and you have your long week. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, one of the weeks you're off the two days during the week and the following you're off the three days during the week. Mm -hmm. And then every other weekend. Every so other it's weekend. like a five, two split. Right. I feel like that, that's the easiest way to get it. Okay, and you answered how long are their shifts. So throughout their shifts, how many breaks are they able to get in? And I don't know if they mean for the, the handler or for the puppy. I don't know. Well, so you so, can talk to both. Yeah, so mm -hmm. the dog, I mean, if, if we're having a slow shift, uh, we'll get the dog out, of course. We're, we're doing training mm -hmm. every yep. day. Every mm -hmm. day, getting the dog out and doing something the with the dog. So mm -hmm. so he gets out and, and they always, they have to work in order to play. Yep. I think I they like have that. to do something in, mm -hmm. in order to play, work, mm -hmm. work to play. And they there love it. Go. It's all a game for them. So, and as far as us, our breaks, I, it just depends on calls. Yeah. I, there's mm -hmm. just, I bring my lunch with me and mm -hmm. I've, I've ate it they live cold in, their car. in my car. Mm -hmm. So yeah, it just all depends on call volume. Exactly. And some days, mm -hmm. yeah, some days you come to work and you don't stop. And, exactly. and other days you're out doing obedience mm -hmm. and some training with your dog yeah. a lot. So, and again, you guys have probably seen this from tweet alongs. And if you're asking this, I feel like you have not watched the tweet alongs. They probably should watch the tweet alongs. I'm just saying, right? Shout right. out to our social media coordinators. Mm -hmm. Okay. And I think, um, what do canine units do on their day off? 
feel like this is so broad and everybody's different. Oh, like, yeah, everybody yeah. is different. So I would say probably just like everybody else mm-hmm. does on, you know, I have my honeydew list that yeah, I, exactly. I got things to do around exactly. the house. And sometimes the dog, he, he gets mm-hmm. underfoot and he gets in the way yep. trying to help. And, exactly. That's you know, not okay. Um, Go do your own thing. Yeah, Relax. But it, and again, even, even at home, right? Mm-hmm. So there is no, you just take the dog out back and throw yep. the ball. They mm-hmm. have to work and do something. Yep in order in order to get mm-hmm. in order to get paid basically exactly so yes. you gotta do the darn thing yeah. and most of our so uh, i don't know if a lot of pe- people know you cannot transport your canine in your personal vehicle that is correct so most of our canine handlers from what i've heard you guys have like some land like you have some land so the puppy has space to play and stuff because yes. they can't go to a normal park and like play with other puppies right but a lot of handlers have other dogs too and we, yep. babes that they can play with and everything so everyone's different guys yeah. but i think that might be a cute video like a canine's day off like a point of view of a puppy you, you'd, you'd probably see a lot of sleeping exactly you know, especially if we have a busy week yeah, yeah if we have a busy week That's they're they're laying much. down sleeping they I'm sleep a lot anyways but yeah I'm glad if, you said it's, that. if it's so busy you guys they know. sleep a lot exactly so i think uh last question how did the canine tryouts go so they didn't watch the video that's how i feel oh. You didn't watch they, the video. They, they did go well, though. They did <laughs> yes. go well, but you probably should mm-hmm. watch the video I'm just on, <laughs> on the tryouts. Mm-hmm. Uh, but they went well. We had four four handlers get mm-hmm. selected. Um, three of those are going to be patrol mm-hmm. and um, detection dogs. And mm-hmm. then the fourth is going to be a live find dog, mm-hmm. FEMA certified. And I think our third one now, because uh, Heidi and Sue both have, so Canine Phi and Canine Diesel. And we have Canine Mac. Oh, can I Mac? Is, I forgot yeah. a cute little Mac with Scott mm-hmm. Grant. Mm-hmm. So this will be our, our fourth one. That's awesome. So you guys don't see them just yet. We don't do any press conferences or any videos with them until they're done with all of those 500 hours to make sure that they're actually certified um, and their handler and the pup are good to go. And then so maybe like, I, I don't know. January, February, March, whenever that time happens. If it all goes well. Exactly. Some, sometimes there's little hiccups in there. You got to work on things here and mm-hmm. there. So it takes a little bit longer. Yeah, sometimes you go with the flow. That was it. And those are all the questions about canine. And that is Deputy Stone. And we're on to our next set of questions. Hope you enjoyed it. Boom. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> hey, everybody. Okay, so I'm back with Corporal Bullenbacher. And we are at the Anclote River Park to answer his questions. So one of the first questions that we got was, does the Marine unit patrol every day? So the Marine unit has two people in it. And we have a schedule that someone's supposed to be working every day. With other events and stuff, we don't always have someone out, but there's definitely someone on call every day. But we work a schedule similar to patrol where there's someone on every day. Okay, so that kind of answers also how, a, a little bit about how does the work schedule work with the Marine unit? In the Marine unit being there's only two of us and we have to cover 24-7, 365, we have it set up so that one of us is on call one week and then we're off call for a week. However, our work schedule is we both always work Tuesdays and Thursdays. And then depending on what we have to do in the week and what hours we need to flex, what special events we have, dictates what other days in the normal business week, Monday through Friday we work. And then we try to have at least one of us out for Saturday and Sunday. Okay, so that clears that up a lot. Okay, so another question we had was, if there is ever an emergency and someone is out on the water at night, a civilian, what's the protocol? And is that protocol the same as during the day? So I'll answer this in twofold. The first part is if you're ever on the water and you're in a coastal body of water, being a river, the Anclo River, the Gulf of Mexico, um, Tampa Bay, when you're on a boat, the easiest and best thing to do is if it's equipped with a VHF radio, and a GPS is to hail out Mayday to the Coast Guard. Give them mayday, your mayday. latitude and longitude. They'll immediately start a broadcast asking any mariners in the area to come assist you. That's the quickest way to get help on the water. The second quickest way is to dial 911 on your phone. Just remember that when you call 911, instead of calling uh, the Coast Guard on a Mayday, is you're going to a dispatch center. A lot of times the dispatch center you're going to may not even have any marine resources. So there might be a little bit of delay in getting resources to you or alerting other people in the immediate area that you're in trouble. The second part of the question is, if at the sheriff's office you call 911 or we get a call from the Coast Guard and one of us isn't working, whoever's on call is immediately notified by Pasco Communications and then we start responding directly from our house to wherever the boat is to get whatever resources we need to get to be able to get out to you. 
Awesome. That's a lot of really important information for all of you out there if you do boat or if you go out with friends just so that you know. Okay, so another question. What are some of the marine calls that followers don't often get to see? So a lot of the calls at the sheriff's office that you don't get to see or you don't even hear about are more of our environment, environmental crimes type calls. So uh, derelict vessels, any vessel upon <laughs> bringing it a fly over here. Yeah, and it's not us, but it's a really cool looking chopper. Rude. <laughs> okay, I hope you can hear me now. <laughs> so a lot of the calls that people don't get to see are, are environmental crimes type calls. So derelict vessels, so boats that don't run, substantially dismantled, uh, sinking. We handle oh. a lot of those calls. Mm -hmm. Our environmental, um, the pollution calls we go to, really? where a car know. goes in the water, there's illicit discharge yeah. from a facility or residence. Uh, we go to those calls handle them, notify the appropriate resources and coordinate the response, whether we need to get booms to contain the spill or if it's going to be in tidal waters and just go out to mm -hmm. sea and dissipate in the tide. Uh, other calls that you don't get to see are, are boating safety inspections. I'm sure you've seen someone tweet along. On a tweet along, probably. Uh, those happen quite frequently. Mm -hmm. And the other thing would probably be the calls that we get in parks. I don't think we've had any on the tweet alongs. But Meaning, the, is that like someone that is being rowdy at like, say we're at the Anklet River So Park. all sorts of complaints. I'm sure okay. if you have a boat, you've been to a boat ramp and you know all sorts of <laughs> disputes that happen at the boat ramp over how you launch your boat, how you recover your boat, if you're allowed to have alcohol in the parks. How long you're at stuff. the boat ramp. Exactly. <laughs> like any sort of thing. So that's pretty, that's a pretty good chunk of information, I think. So the only other question that I didn't say out loud is if he's off is anybody else on call, but he actually answered that because we went over these questions. So that's pretty good. That's he, great. He's here somewhere. I don't know. Yes. He had to His take a partner call. is somewhere who you guys have met multiple times before. He's done tweet alongs with you guys. Exactly. Plenty of times. But on to the next set of questions. Okay, everybody. So I have Corporal Barlow, who is on our training unit, who I also call them the red shirts. They're normally in a red shirt. And he is also the assistant lead. Assistant team lead. Assistant team lead for our SWAT unit. So I figured he would be best suited to answer these SWAT questions. So here we go. Okay. First question. What are the different tactics that you get trained on in SWAT? Okay, so some of the things that we train for are high-risk search warrants. Mm -hmm. um, let's see, we train to respond to barricaded subjects. Okay. Uh, any hostage rescue situations. Uh, we also do protective security details like dignitary protection when we have someone in town. Interesting. A lot of times we'll augment their um, security personnel that they have okay. just to, to help them out. Okay, hashtag um, bite is one. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> so basically anything that's um, beyond the training and beyond the equipment that like regular patrol guys have, mm -hmm. that's what we're trained for. Okay. We have the training and we have the equipment that we're able to handle critical instances that they might not be able to just based on the level of training we have and the extra equipment that we have. Okay, good stuff. Good stuff. I know you said dignitaries, but have we ever done any celebrities? That's like a side question. Um, I haven't here with the sheriff's office, but mm -hmm. I have when I worked in Key West. Okay. Uh, so let's see, uh, <laughs> the Backstreet Boys. <laughs> really? Yeah. They did a oh, little. Oh, that makes me happy. Yeah, the Backstreet Boys, uh, William Shatner. Okay. Uh, Jimmy Buffett. Uh, Seriously? Yeah. Okay. Wow. Uh, Not to just name drop. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, let's see. We helped out the uh, Secret Service with there That's was there were peace talks between Azerbaijan and Armenia, and they had the peace talks in Key West. So mm -hmm. we augmented the Secret Service and diplomatic security service with the State Department to help them That's out with their security. Wild. That's wild. Just to you know, throw a couple casual you know names yeah, down well. there. The couple <laughs> things that West has done. Okay. So question number two. What type of equipment does SWAT have? Okay, so we have a ballistic vest. Um, they're a little bit more beefed up than the vest that the guys on uh, patrol wear or some of the other units wear. Uh, we have ballistic helmets. Um, 
let's see, we have shields. Mm -hmm. uh, some of the guys do have shields, but we have some shields that are a little bit more beefed up okay. um, that will be able to stop a rifle round if, okay. God forbid, someone decides to shoot at us uh, with the rifle. Um, we have cameras that mm -hmm. we can use. We have little covert cameras that we can uh, put in place mm -hmm. uh, so we can see what's going on in a location okay. we might need to make entry into. Uh, we have robots that we use, that. Um, little <laughs> tiny robots that can roam around and kind of clear places mm -hmm. for us. Mm -hmm. If there's a place that is not quite clear yet and we don't really want to um, like endanger our deputies by mm -hmm. sending them into an unknown, mm -hmm. if we can clear it with the robot, we will we'll do, do that. that. Um, so that's any anything like that that can make our job a lot safer, that's, okay. that's what we're using. I love that, like Wally, -E, but for cops. Um, we also have armored vehicles, which I think some of the people are probably familiar with. But yeah, all of our specialty vehicles you guys have seen in plenty of videos. Me and Amanda drove them, and Mo gets to do them. They're also out in the community if you guys live close by at Touch a Truck event. So yeah. you guys should Absolutely. know about those. Okay, so. Another one, you kind of answered this one, but when or what kind of calls do SWAT respond to? And okay, yeah, so the, all the things that we talked about being trained for are mm -hmm. the ones that we respond to. Mm -hmm. uh, a lot of critical incidents, basically. Mm -hmm. Okay, so who takes control of the situation? Okay, so if a critical incident occurs, Usually the first deputy on scene um, will take control until someone of either higher rank or someone who has a lot more uh, experience okay. is able to take care of it. Um, we have a pretty good relationship between the SWAT team and people that not necessarily on the SWAT team, but so for instance, if we have a squad of people that work on patrol mm -hmm. and there might be one or two SWAT guys on that squad, if there's a critical incident, most of the supervisors um, even though they're a supervisor, technically they're in charge, they use their resources. So if they gotcha. have somebody who's a little bit more trained in tactics, then they will use that person to get information or they might actually have them run the scene makes sense. since they have a little bit more training mm -hmm. in doing things like that. That makes sense. Pretty easy, easy, simple. Okay, what are the qualifications to get into the SWAT unit? Okay, so... Which also no. <laughs> yes, um, you have to have been a deputy with the Sheriff's Office for at least a year. Mm -hmm. uh, that's also on the correction side, uh, as well as our law enforcement side. We do have members of the SWAT team that, are, that work at our jail. Um, they're usually members of their TAC team, which is basically the tactical... Um, side for corrections okay. and they help us out. They help us by helping with our perimeter whenever we have okay. uh, an incident we have to deal with. Um, so you have to have been here at least a year. Um, you have to have not had any disciplinary issues within okay. that past year. So okay. you have to have been off probation okay. working for the sheriff's office. Uh, you put in a letter of interest. Um, your file gets reviewed to see if you've had any disciplinary issues. Mm -hmm. um, your supervisor is spoken to to see, mm -hmm. you know, if you're a, a good deputy, exactly. if you're somebody that we would Who want on the team. Like? Oh. Um, once that we've done that, uh, there's a PT test you have to do. Okay. Uh, you have to run a mile and a half in a certain time. Mm -hmm. You have to do push-ups and sit-ups, and you have to do so many of those um, within a minute. Time frame, okay. And that's um, like the beginning stages, and you guys have seen that in a video. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's right. Mm -hmm. I think they have. Yep. Um, after that, uh, there is an obstacle course, and mm -hmm. we usually go to Marion County for that. Mm -hmm. And you have to do that when then it's a timed event. Um, so you do the PT test, you do the obstacle course. Mm -hmm. After that, there are a couple of shooting tests where we put stress on the people mm -hmm. whenever they're shooting. Um, you're so not, just not just standing, standing there still. And, and still and nice and relaxed and you're shooting. <sighs> we have to put them under stress because obviously with some of the things that we have to deal with in SWAT, it's a high stress environment. Exactly. So we want to make sure that that person can handle the stress and they not can crack. operate when they need to mm -hmm. at a certain level. Mm -hmm. So we put stress on them through calisthenics and then we will have them shoot after, you know, they're mm -hmm. kind of tired and doing that to make sure they can still operate in a high stress environment. We have a couple of different uh, iterations of that. And then we usually have a mixture of an obstacle course and shooting, and those are usually timed events too. Okay. Um, the time, some timed events are pass fail, some are not. We just mm -hmm. use them to grade people. So if someone happens to have a faster time than another person mm -hmm. and we only have so many slots open, that then obviously the person who's performed better mm -hmm. will get that slot first. So at the end of the day, time matters, guys. Yes, it does. Which, and you guys have all seen all of this. So Marion County, the videos where they repel, and I cry at the top of the tower. That is the trial video. Um, and that was like, and I think in two parts, I did it in two parts, but you guys have actually seen that whole process. Yeah, yeah. thanks. You're welcome. All right, so as far as how many times to try out, it's usually once a year, uh, sometimes twice, depending on how many openings we have mm -hmm. on the team. 
Awesome. Good stuff. And that is Corporal Barlow with all of the SWAT questions. And we're gonna move on to the next category. We're wonderful. Okay, everybody. All right, so I have Deputy, <laughs> I have Deputy Martinez here and he's going to answer his questions in regards to being on the road and some court questions, basically, from patrol. So, okay. <laughs> okay, so first question. Um, what requires blue and red lights and sirens versus what doesn't? So to encompass that in something very simple and quick, um, pretty much a danger to life. Um, if there's something where uh, someone's going to get hurt, uh, seriously injured, we have to get there quickly because that expedited response time could uh, minimize the chance of that person getting hurt. And then of course, if another unit, unit being us and law enforcement needs help, we have to get there quickly because they don't ask for just no reason. Uh, something is, is, is not going well for them and they need us there. You know. So in a nutshell, that's when we respond with blue and red lights and sirens. So, okay, question number two. When it comes to going to court for a case, how do you guys prepare for that? So we prepare um, very similar to how criminal defense attorneys prepare their clients. Um, so from the start, uh, we have what's called invest, and then we'll present our case to the state attorney. Uh, from that point, the state attorney will decide if they want to file or not. Um, and then there's a series of different hearings that they'll do as the court as the court case gets ready for trial. Um, so we'll attend pre-trial prep with them, we'll attend any kind of motion to suppress with them, and the motion to suppress is just basically evidence that may be faulty, or that the defense may think is faulty, so they'll try to have it removed from the case so it's not used against them in like any way. Um, and then uh, during our pre-trial prep, we'll go over the report, our body-worn camera, just to make sure that everything's squared away so that when we get to the court date, um, we're presenting the case and it's strong and we're not missing any aspects of it that may be in the report. Good stuff. And patrol deputies are not the only ones that go to court. Uh, CPIs also do go to court. I've been subpoenaed six times since I've been out of the CPI unit, uh, but we also prepare kind of in the same way. We call the state attorney's office and we get coaching based basically on how to handle ourselves, what to say, what not to say. We get a refresher on the case as well. So it's kind of, they're not the only ones. So also the forensics unit, they get subpoenaed to go oh, to court yes. too. Oh yes. A lot. Okay, so what, someone asked when are you needed to go to court? So basically what kind of cases? So. Um, I feel like that varies. Yeah. <laughs> it, it varies great. Uh, the majority of the time it's when there's some sort of major charge that the uh, defendant doesn't want on their record or wants to handle or whatever their reason may be. They'll challenge it and they'll actually take the case to trial. Um, so if the case is going to trial after we hit you know, the invest, the pre-trial prep, we hit the uh, motions to suppress, and they still feel that they have uh, a strong chance of winning the case, uh, they'll ask their attorney to take it to trial, and that's when we, uh, we show up, we present our case, they present theirs, and the judge decides. Now on a smaller scale also, I feel like traffic tickets? Traffic tickets, yep. yes. If you don't like a traffic ticket, you have the right to battle it. Mm -hmm. um, and if they need us there, which normally they do, uh, we will we will show up and uh, present how we stopped you, why we stopped you, and hopefully you have a good defense as well. And then the judge will decide, just like if it was a bigger case. Okay, so. Okay, this question was from when you first get a call, like at the very beginning, what happened and what all is involved through the end of a call. I personally feel like this is what the tweet alongs do. Yeah. <laughs> this is the sole purpose of a tweet along to show how that happens. So I feel like, can, can we kind of skip that? that, that uh, we, we could skip it. It's a very large question, too. It's a long um, question. But if you want to see it in action, Tweet alongs, tweet alongs. Boom. Because so. you were there, right there. So our social media coordinators are showing what happens when a deputy gets a call yep. going to it. So follow our tweet alongs for that. Exactly. But another question that you could answer, which you'd ever see, is how does a deputy start their shift 
what are some mandatory things that need to be done at the start and end of a shift? So that varies from deputy to deputy. Um, I can only speak on my behalf. So when I come into work, I check all of my cases and make sure they're up to date. We have to do what's called supplements to make sure that we're, we're still actively working on the case and we're, we're documenting our findings or lack of findings. Um, but I, I will uh, wake up, uh, get dressed, check my cases, uh, make sure that my car is squared away, there's fuel in it, um, all my firearms are stored where they need to be stored, um, and then I'll just start patrolling. Um, it's a pretty quick process. Um, and throughout the day, you know, you, you have your calls for service, but uh, it is a perk of, of law enforcement. You wake up, get dressed, get in your car, and that's your office. So, so that kind of actually kind of answers another question, which asks, do you take your equipment home with you, or is it stored at PSO? So, patrol will have what's called take-home cars, and we take all of our equipment home with us. Um, You'll never see us leave our firearms in the car or our computers. So if, if you're ever looking for goodies, you won't find them in there, okay? Mm -hmm. um, but we do take our stuff home, we store it, and uh, it just makes it a lot easier. Because for some of us, a drive to the district, like for me, is about a 35 minute drive. So to do that every morning in your personal car, um, your fuel, your mileage, mm -hmm. it, it would be a lot. So the Sheriff's Office is very good with making sure that we're prepared and have what we need to make our jobs that much easier. Our agency is pretty blessed when it comes to that because I've heard of a lot of agencies that they don't, they're not allowed to take home their cars. So you are having to drive to the district office where you patrol, swap out your car, and then start your patrolling. So we, we are very fortunate that all of our members have to take cars. Absolutely, because with that too, you swap out your car at a district, there's another person driving. So you have to take all of your stuff out. Mm -hmm. Well, it doesn't sound so bad at first. Over 30 years, it gets old. And if you guys think back to a video that I did with Sergeant Thomas, where he showed how meticulous his vehicle is, exactly, Sergeant Smiles, and everything that's in the trunk of his car and in the sides, because you live in your car. That's a lot of stuff if you weren't able to just stay in your own vehicle. But so this actually ties into another question, which asked how does dispatch know when our deputies or anyone that's on patrol is ready to take a call and when are you ready to stop taking the calls? So 10-8 is our code that we use for we are available and 10-7 is we are done for the day. So Very easy. As long as dispatch sees that that deputy is 10-8, they can send them a call wherever they need them. Uh, they try to keep them in their zone. Hey, how are you? They try to keep them in their zone. Yeah. <laughs> no, worries. no, we're filming. We're Rocky recording. Filming. We're live. Yeah. yeah. Thank you, guys. <laughs> <laughs> oh, people are little, so it's all summer. So this is all something that I really enjoy about the job. Because you get to meet different people every day. It's never the same yes. person. So it is lovely. Um, but, back to the question. So, um, as long as dispatch sees that that deputy is 10-8, they can send them a call. And they'll keep them close to their zone. Unless it's something priority that needs to be tended to somewhere else quickly. Then they'll send just whatever deputy is available and close <laughs> So they don't always live where they patrol. So, Joe, you live technically it's D. No, you're in D1. D3. D2. You live in D2? I live in That's D2. considered D2? No. Really? Yeah. I'm considered yeah. D3. Look at what I know. So he patrols D2, but D2 is very large. But just because you have, we have three different districts, but then we have zones within those districts. So I feel like when do you guys? Because maybe the question's asking like he's prepped and ready, and he's getting in his car and he's hitting the gas and driving he is ready to take a call but he's not in his zone so that comes into play with their CAD system and their computers and like anytime they get into their little car this little car dispatch can see them on the larger map to know that they're there in their unit and vehicle. A little, a little arrow and they can see where we are mm -hmm. um, so. They, they, they know pretty much everything about us as we work, okay. so, and, and they need to. They need to. Yep. Yeah. So I think that kind of, okay. Mm. Someone asked, is it the same for other units in regards to dispatch knowing when you can and cannot take a call? So I don't know if you guys mean this in regards to canine or uh, aviation, forensics, step, hit. We've got uh, so many different units. Star. Yes. But it's pretty uh, so it, it is pretty much the same. Um, the only thing is, so 
the, the first units are always going to be patrol because that's what they're doing in patrol. Um, the other specialty units have different jobs that they have to do, different mm -hmm. assignments. Um, so they are not what's called tied to the radio. Um, they have to work on some other things, and they 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 are they are put in place to attack specific problems. Mm -hmm. um, so you'll never really see dispatch send them a call. Mm -hmm. uh, however, if patrol is just absolutely busy and no one is available, um, luckily we have, you know, work this Star year. units. Yep. Star mm -hmm. units and everything. Star units, uh, hit units, step units uh, that um, are really good guys. And they also watch the screen and they say, hey, patrol is really having a hard time. Let's go help them out a bit. Mm -hmm. And then after they clear a little bit, then they can go back to doing what they were doing. Mm -hmm. So it's pretty nice to have. Friends yeah. that have you back. Mm -hmm. And guys as a whole, it was just, it was all inclusive. Guys and women. I feel like someone's going to say something about that. Guys and women. Yes, guys okay. And that is pretty much boom. Perfect. Yeah. <laughs> and on to the next set of questions, whoa. which I think, whoa, I think it's going to be it. <laughs> and next one. Okay. Okay. So I have Amanda here, who's the community engagement specialist and PIO for the sheriff's office. Mm -hmm. C E S Hunter C O S, whatever my last name is now. So uh, we are both kind of, we are both half PIO and also have other job duties, which we have explained plenty of times before. But one of the questions that was asked was describe the PIO aspect of my job. So I figured I'd bring Amanda into this because who better suited to answer it? Because <laughs> our, our one of our bosses, Kevin, will not be on this video with us. No. Yeah. So I figured you want to sure. So describe that. Um, being a PIO, which is a public information officer, mm -hmm. it's um, basically you coordinate telling the general public as well as the media what's going on that they need to be aware of. So if there's a situation going on, um, like a couple weeks ago, we had a carjacking situation mm -hmm. that was ongoing. That was something we needed to not only inform the media about, mm -hmm. but also the general public, public because well. there was a public safety issue. So mm -hmm. that's on us to get, coordinate with the media, put it on um, social, social media. media. So when you mm -hmm. see those posts on Facebook or whatever. Be on the lookout. That's us. What's going on? <laughs> Our deputies are on scene of right. XYZ. And avoid the area. I mean, mm -hmm. that type of thing. That comes from us. Um, so that's it in a very short, short nutshell. Yes, because it is um, a lot. Yeah, so I know we've talked about this before, mm -hmm. but um, there are three of us that are on call yes. every three weeks. Every third week, yep. Um, mm -hmm. So that means that when dispatch or someone on scene calls you in the middle of the night, you head on out to the mm -hmm. scene yeah. or you figure out what's going on if you need to go out there. Mm -hmm. And then, you, again, you coordinate with the media or the general public on what's going on. For like a staging area, which is yep. basically... Yep. Like gives the media a safe distance away from the yep. crime scene so that they don't tamper with it, but also they can have a nice shot for their own footage that they need to do yep. and whatnot. So that's kind of, that's yeah. just a little bit of it. Uh, press a very, conferences. very small one. Yeah, um, we do press conferences. We do um, media, media releases. releases. Working with different TV networks if they want to do like a crime show based off of a yep. true case that we had. We do that as well. Public mm -hmm. records requests. Public we do records most of those. <laughs> Redacting. Yep. Uh, looking at arrest affidavits. To pulling booking photos. Yep. Pulling body-worn camera footage mm -hmm. that you all know and love. Yeah. Um, that's all us. There's a lot. Yeah, there's a lot that literally goes into our job. So someone also asked what a day looks like and I don't know if you meant like <laughs> us or just as a PIO because we do more than just that and our days it's a good day for it yeah you never today was great <laughs> all over the place you never know what exactly we will be doing and even if we have things on our calendar most sometimes they could get yeah. wonky and flipped and switched all over like today but so part of a managed job also outside of being a PIO you I basically describe like she pitches PSO to the media Yep. I feel. Yeah. Yeah. Idea. So I, um, part of my job is going to look for interesting stories, um, which I don't like calling them stories cause it sounds like fiction. So I true. try to find, um, really good parts of PSO, which it's not hard. You don't have to look nope. very hard here. Nope. Um, so I try to find really good parts to, um, kind of when you see those 
the fe- general I, the interest feel good feel stories, good stories yes. in the media. Mm-hmm. So like, um, we just recently did one on our be hit team, our behavioral health intervention mm-hmm. team. Um, I think they're fantastic and mm-hmm. I really like talking about that message, but those types Very of stories. <laughs> mm-hmm. yes. Yeah. Especially in Pasco. Mm-hmm. So, um, that's part of my job is going out and, um, coordinating what that story looks like and then finding, uh, media that wants to talk about it. Mm-hmm. So, and that's a lot of her Mm -hmm. job. Um, But also we had like a Mac call out this morning. And even though, so Kevin's on call this week, but because we all, all three of us live in different areas of the county, Amanda was actually the best Yep. Uh, in the best position in to, the closest, handle, exactly, yeah. to handle that Mac call. And Mac is a missing... Missing an abducted child. Yes. So we had a missing little boy that was found safely. Thankfully, he was yes. found safe. Um, mm-hmm. I've been to a couple of those now. Um, and fortunately, all the children have been recovered. Yes. Um, in yes. good condition. Yes. Um, no none harm, were harmed, which is the best possible outcome. Yes. Um, so we have those. Sometimes we go to other call outs mm-hmm. for certain swap re- call-outs. Swap call outs. Um, Cause you never know where the media could be showing up. Yeah. Marine unit call outs. If mm-hmm. they're doing some kind of a, um, water rescue or mm-hmm. things like that. So we've and we work closely with uh, FWC, FWC, with FHP, mm-hmm. with Fire Rescue. So that's just all a part of being a PIO, but also our jobs. And you guys know I do video editing in-house and externally too. So that's another part. So another question that someone asked was, how do we get members prepared for a press conference? <laughs> That's my specialty. <laughs> I do not like getting our members prepared for a press conference. I do my best not <laughs> to have to have a press conference. That's me. Yeah. I do my best. <laughs> yeah. Whereas I'm all about the press conference. Mm-hmm. Kevin and I are all about the press conference. So nine yeah. times out of 10, it's me or Kevin yeah. doing the media <laughs> training for our deputies. Exactly. Um, yeah. We're really, really fortunate in that this agency has a great training program mm-hmm. through the academy. So um, deputies going through the academy or potential deputies going through the academy actually get to learn mm-hmm. um, a little bit. They touch Very on it, bit. which is it's super helpful because at least they have a basis. Mm -hmm. Um, But for a deputy or detective coming in for the first time doing an interview, we like to go through the whole, basically what the process Mm -hmm. is going to look like from the time they walk into the room to the time they walk out. out. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So we kind of walk them through on who's going to speak, um, what what they're going to talk about. mm -hmm. So if it's not just them, say the sheriff's going to talk and then, or introduce them. Yeah. Or their lieutenant's going to speak first. And then, you know, that person or whoever. If there's a PowerPoint to go with it, what's going to need to be shown. When that's going to happen, if that's going to happen beforehand, or if we're going to do it at the end end, or Mm -hmm. all the way through and who's going to be doing Mm -hmm. that. It's basically coordinating the whole press conference and letting that person into that because we don't want to send them into something that they're not blindsided. Yes, exactly. So, and we also at our agency, we also have a pretty good working relationship with the media. So the media, if they say they're going to pretty much stay on topic for one thing, they don't really ever stray from that too much. But that is also why we're always in the room too. Yeah. Because sometimes they'll bring up questions about a different case case or one information about two Mm -hmm. cases going on concurrently. Mm -hmm. Um, So some of the things we do to prep our members is um, try to prepare them as much as we can. So mm-hmm. we think up potential questions okay. that media may ask. How so, they may stray or twist yeah. something. Or sometimes we honestly get a lot of questions from social media. So if it's a mm-hmm. case we've talked about on social media, in the case of like this morning, we had a missing yep. child. So we kind of look at those social media questions and can develop some potential questions mm-hmm. that media may ask from those. Um, because we don't want them to get up there and think about the answer for a very long time, which exactly. they don't because they're the subject matter experts. So yes. a lot of times they're very it well prepared. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So um, some of the things we do have to warn them about is uh, usually has to do with um, public information laws um, and victims rights. Mm-hmm. So a lot of times um, Marcy's we law. deal with Marcy's law, so we can't talk about certain things that will identify a victim, yes. which when you're very close to a case and you're very familiar with all the players in a case, it's kind of hard. So we have to kind of coach them through that yes. um, just because you're excited to talk mm-hmm. about it. Um, so you kind of you have help to, that case. Yeah. Yeah. So you have to separate yourself mm-hmm. from that a little bit and remember that not everybody can know that mm-hmm. information. And it's also pretty good that most of whenever we do a press conference, say we have just a deputy that's on it or a detective, their COC, their chain of command 
they also are aware of who has and has not been on camera and who is or isn't the most yes. comfortable. Yeah. So say it's someone that it's a big case and it's their first one that they're doing a press conference for, they will also have support from their chain of command. They're with them, either standing, sometimes you see like people this, standing yeah. next to them and they Silently. don't really say anything and they just kind of, you know, like to it's give nice them to that, have that. Exactly. I don't want to say buddy system, but kind of like exactly. that to have a mm -hmm. presence there that, you know, that mm -hmm. gives you a little more confidence. Exactly. Or even at the back <clears throat> of the room sometimes. So like where we have the camera now is where the media is normally set up. You guys have seen this video before they film in that direction. So sometimes just to have someone behind the camera, like you're doing good. Like just a face to look at. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so that's also kind of how to prep mm -hmm. individuals. But most of the time when we have people for press conferences, they've been doing this. It's a lot of detectives or we have yeah. lieutenants or, you know, sergeants sometimes. They've mm -hmm. been doing this and they know the subject matter, like Amanda said, so we don't have to prep them too much. It's just like a, it's it'll be kind of, over yeah, quicker Cleaning than, it know. up a little yeah. bit so it's not too much information mm -hmm. or an overwhelming amount of information yeah. that maybe the media doesn't care about. It's just kind of putting the details succinctly mm -hmm. so that um, you get all of the information that's necessary, yep. but it's not a... Epic, long-winded exactly. story. It's not a novel, okay? <laughs> right. It's not, it's not a feature-length yeah. film. Exactly. So, so that's, um, kinda... that's basically it. Yeah. I mean, we do, if we do a press conference in here and out in the... Because um, it could happen anywhere. Yeah, out in the field. We've done some. We try to have a quick brief, like I said, mm -hmm. just to put together who's going to talk when, what we're going to talk about, and um, anticipated questions. And that's with all parties involved. So yeah. Just not the main one talking. That's it's everybody if our sheriff usually. is there, mm -hmm. colonel. Secretary. If there's a major crimes detective, if there's, mm -hmm. you know, a CPI, if it's Sergeant, an advocate, Sergeant. something mm -hmm. like that. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, sometimes even we have to get prep for press conferences. Yes. I've only done one. Talk, right. Well, I've done sound ones. I don't want to do it. I have done. <laughs> Amanda's done it quite often. I do it a couple times a week. Yeah, no. <laughs> yeah at least my was... most recent one was out in the field actually yeah. last week. So we had a um, potential bomb threat at a hospital. Yep. That. Oh, yep. And actually, last week, yep. our boss had to prep me for that, which was an interesting dynamic. Yeah. Dynamic. Yeah. Because he's normally <clears throat> he's normally very hands off. But yes. It was he and I on the we scene. Two with, bosses. Yeah, yeah. It was he and I on the scene with um, some uh, fire rescue and some other folks out there and it was no. it was different to be no. prepped by your boss when you're normally doing the project yeah. no I do my best anytime I there's the possibility of me I do my best to figure out whoever is on the case to get them to come in or Amanda yes <laughs> if they can't because I also feel like my hands weren't on the case they can talk about it better than I can because I will just read you what is on the paper and then I don't even want to do that so then Amanda does it <laughs> People don't understand. I feel like the media is different than talking to this camera. It's completely different. But uh, those were Amanda's questions, kind of our questions. So on to the next set. Thanks. Okay, so I know that was a really long video. Uh, thank you to all of you that watched the whole thing, or uh, thank you to those that participated and sent in your questions. I tried to get to most of them, but... It was, you see, already see how long this video was as is, but if you haven't already done so, like, comment, and subscribe, and I will see you guys next time. Have a great weekend.